Hello everybody. It's been a long time since I've uh, done a video. I've been so busy moving, getting uh, set up in our new home, and I'm so glad it's all done. And now I can really enjoy what I really love. I'm telling you, I've been I've been listening to Greg Henry uh, the past couple of days, and it is just ble he he is such a blessing to me. I just love that young man. He is so filled with the wisdom of God. A little while ago, I uh, posted on Facebook, my heart is twisting on having the mind of Christ. That's what I've been thinking on. Having the mind of Christ. What does it mean to have the mind of Christ? You know, in, uh, in John 1, First of all, let me just tell you, I'm so excited. I just love the Word of God. It is what floats my boat. It is what blows my doors open. It's what causes me to soar like an eagle. Amen. Hallelujah. In John 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay? You can't separate the Word from God because the Word is God. And that Word, Word, is Logos, or where we get our English word, logic. It means reasoning or mental faculty. And you know, it goes on to say that he was in the world, Okay, the Word became flesh, as it says in verse 14. The Word, the logic of God, okay, the mental faculty of God, the way God uh, thought and believed was wrapped in human flesh and presented to us. And it says he was in the world, and the world was made by him. This very one that became flesh, this world and everything in it was created by him. And the world knew him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You know, those that received him. That word means to grab a hold of. It's very aggressive. To grab a hold of, to make use of, to take to oneself. Okay? This very logic of God that became manifest, if you will grab a hold of this, if you will grab a hold of this logic to make use of it for yourself, you are going to discover a world that you never knew. Amen. Hallelujah. And um, then my heart went to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I'll tell you something. I just love the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul said that we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. You know, the wisdom of God is Christ. You know, in uh, one... Uh, Corinthians, uh, the previous chapter, in verse 30, in chapter 1, it says, But of him, which is God, are ye in Christ Jesus. Okay, God has put us in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Okay? Okay? Christ is the wisdom of God. The Word, which became flesh, was the wisdom of God made apparent to all of us. 
And it says, we speak this wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom. Okay, it was hidden. It wasn't hidden because God chose it to be hidden. It was hidden because man partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which was a pseudo-wisdom. It was a false wisdom which obscured our view from the true wisdom of God. And it, he says, we speak this wisdom of God in a mystery, even the wi hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. That word ordained uh, just means declared. Okay? God declared this for our glory. That word glory, doxa, it's God's good view and opinion of us. From the very beginning, God ordained this wisdom, which is God loves you. He thinks you're wonderful. It says, which none of the princes of this world knew. None of the rulers of this world knew this wisdom. It says, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You see, if they'd have known who Christ really was, they never would have crucified him. That's why Jesus, when he was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amen. They didn't know. It was hidden from them because they were, they were, had the fallen mind of Adam. It says, this is so good, this excites me so much. It says, but as it is written, now when it says as it is written, that's Old Testament, okay? That's BC, okay? Before Christ came and did the work to open our eyes. It says, for as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things that God had prepared for them that love him. You know, it was inconceivable to man, the wisdom of God, because man's core of reasoning was from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Man's, man's view of God's wisdom was unattainable because there was a veil upon the heart of every human being that prevented them from seeing the truth. So in the old covenant, before Christ came to open our eyes, it says it was impossible I had not seen, ear had not heard, neither it had it entered into the heart of man the things that God had prepared for them that love him. But God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But God. Amen. You know, but God, it would have been just the same right now as it was before. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit you know that word spirit is all that word means is vital principle or the mental disposition okay you see remember as many as received him to receive him is to receive his logic to be able to reason from the same mental disposition as Christ did. So, God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. So, when we have the same mental disposition or vital principle that Christ had, then we will be able to see everything that God has for us. It says, 
He's revealed them to us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So if we want to comprehend God, we must have His Spirit or His mental disposition. Now, how are we filled with the Spirit? You know, Jesus said something in John 6 where it was on the Feast of um, Unleavened Bread. He proclaimed that he was the true bread of life. Not like the manna that came down from heaven and the people died. No, he was the true bread that came down from heaven. And he says, whosoever eateth this bread will live forever. And then he went on to say that unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you can have no part of me. And oh, people were so disgusted. They left. And Jesus turned around. And he said, in verse 61 of chapter 6 of John, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, does this offend you? I mean, hey, let's face it. You know, Jews were told, you know, you never drink blood, you know, because the life is in the blood. And here Jesus is saying, you got to drink my blood. I mean, people were just like, oh, we can't hear this. So Jesus turned around to his disciples and he says, does this offend you? He says, what if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? See, Jesus knew who he was. Jesus knew where he came from. It says, it is the Spirit that quickeneth. It's the Spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So you see, as we eat of Christ, as we eat of his flesh and his blood, in actuality what we're doing is we're eating of his words. Remember when Jesus was tempted of the devil in Matthew uh, 4? He turned around to the devil and he said in, in verse 4, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Listen, Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. And he says, the words that I speak, their spirit and their life. It's the spirit that quickeneth. It's the spirit that gives life. So as we feed on these wonderful words of Jesus, it quickens us. It makes us alive. It causes us to be in tune with who we really are and how God really feels about us. Hallelujah. That is so good. And so now back to... Um, Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He says in verse 12. Now remember, no man knows God except the Spirit. So in order for us to know God or comprehend God, we must be filled with the same Spirit or the same logic or vital principle that God is filled with. It says, now, it says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, not the logic of the world, not the logic that Adam was filled with after the fall, or the rulers of this world were filled with when they crucified Jesus, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. Unless we, can, unless we can comprehend how God truly feels about us, 
we will never be able to see all the good that God has prepared for us and be a partaker of it. Because if we don't have the same logic that God has, we will disqualify ourselves. We will look at ourselves according to the flesh and say, we don't deserve it. But when you can see that God sees you as valuable, as a treasure, such a treasure, that when he found this treasure that was hidden in the field, which was the world, that he went and he sold everything to purchase that field so he could obtain that treasure. This is the story of Christ. He came to this earth and he seen the treasure that was in this earth, which was every human being. And he valued every human being worthy to die. To die for that human being. To die away that old way of thinking. To die away the sin that had the world captivated. To die away that wisdom that we could see the true wisdom of God. Hallelujah. He took the veil away. Glory to God. And now I can see how good God is. Hallelujah. It says, he says, which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. Not in the wisdom of the world the wisdom of the world tells you that you're not as you ought to be but if you try hard enough you might be that's not the wisdom of God the wisdom of God declares this I am be when God revealed that to me if God is I am if God is holy if God is as he ought to be, and he made me in his image, then I am as I ought to be. I am, not I will be. It's now. Faith is now. I am pleasing to God. Hallelujah. It says, but the natural man, the Adamic, man, the carnal man, the man that is still uh, imprisoned to the wisdom of the world, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. You know, as long as we have the mind of Adam, we cannot receive everything that God has prepared for us. You know, in Ephesians 1, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us, past tense, with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Okay? He's already blessed us. The blessing already came out. As a matter of fact, when God blessed man, and said, be fruitful and multiply, he never retracted that blessing. <laughs> the blessing was always there. But after man fell, he could not see he was blessed. Glory to God. But now my eyes are open, I can see. I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed no matter what. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, so the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for their foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, for they are spiritually discerned. Unless you have the same mind of, of Christ that was in him, uh, you won't discern that the things of God are for you. It says, but he that is spiritual. What does it mean to be spiritual? To just believe what God believes about you. 
that's all. It's no, you know, big hoity-toity thing. It's just like, you know what? I just believe what God believes about me. That's it right there. It says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. We have it. We have the mind of Christ available to us. Okay, this logic has been presented to us in the gospel. And the scripture tells us, I think it's in Ephesians. Let me turn there. Hallelujah. It says in Ephesians chapter 4. It says, let's see here. Verse 17. This I say therefore, and testify of the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity or the futility of their mind, having the understanding darkened. You see? Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. You see what he's saying. Remember what I talked about in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2? The wisdom of God that was hidden. It wasn't hidden because God chose it to be. It was hidden because man ate of a wrong wisdom which didn't allow him to see the wisdom of God. And he's saying, listen, don't you walk like other people that's minds and hearts are still blinded because they can't see it. And these people are alienated from the life of God, not because God is mad at them, but because of the ignorance of their own heart because they are blind to the truth. It says, who being past feeling have given themselves over to all lasciviousness. Because they can't see the truth of their true identity and their true value, they just work all kinds of uncleanness and greediness. Because they're still trying to find their value in what they do and what they possess. It says, but we have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard of him and been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, that word conversation is lifestyle, of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. It says, put off concerning the former lifestyle of the old man. How do you put off the former lifestyle of the old man, which was corrupt according to deceitful lust, by being renewed in the spirit of your mind? You know, I am not what I used to be because I discovered who I really am and it says that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness you see I was created I was created before the foundation of the world God declared me to be righteous and holy and as I see that truth of who I really am, that I am righteous and I am holy, guess what? I'm going to act like it. Because the scripture says in Proverbs 23, 7, As a man thinketh or believeth in his heart, so is he. So you can't act unrighteous if you truly believe in your heart that you are righteous. Amen. And Paul goes on to say in, um, in Ephesians chapter 3, this is so wonderful. He says, 
He said, I'm going to start at verse 7. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. It's all God doing it. Amen. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of this mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. This wisdom this wisdom was hid in God. It was hid to mankind because man partook of a false wisdom which didn't allow them to see the true wisdom of God. But Jesus Christ came to reveal this true wisdom to us to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God as the church as the church partakes of this wisdom and this vital principle that is in God becomes our very mental disposition we make known to all the principalities and powers in heavenly places the wisdom of God because we are manifesting this wisdom in our lives according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom Christ we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him you see this faith this word faith is just the persuasion of him it's the same thing that Christ was persuaded of by God we are persuaded of by Christ hallelujah the the we he goes on to say oh I've got to finish I can't cut it short it says he goes on to pray. He says, For this cause, in verse 14, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And you know, I just got to share this with you. I was listening uh, yesterday, I, I, I believe it was, to a message by Greg Henry, Gospel Revolution Church. If you go to Gospel Revolution Church and go to uh, Greg's audio and go into the archives, this message, I believe it was preached March 16th, 2014, and it's called Being Filled with the Fullness of God. That message just blessed me so much as I listened. I have listened to that message. I would venture to say, I don't know, at least a hundred times. And I keep sucking the juice out of it. It is just so good. And um, he was talking about this. That you have to realize that Christ not only is a person, but Christ is a wisdom. And you can receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior into your heart and have Christ dwelling in your heart. And yet, 
not have Christ, the wisdom of God, dwelling in your heart. And unless you have Christ, the wisdom of God, dwelling in your heart, you are never going to experience the love of God like was in Christ. And that's why the Apostle Paul is praying that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. Remember that word faith is the, the persuasion that that same persuasion would be in your heart. You see, our hearts have got to be persuaded that God sees us perfect, innocent, without spot or wrinkle, that he sees us worthy, that he sees us as one of his family, that we can speak face to face, that there is no shame or um, sense of intimidation coming before our Heavenly Father. We must see ourselves mentally as just going into the throne room and jumping up on Dad's lap and just giving him kisses and him giving us kisses and us having a right all good time. Oh my goodness. This is the way we've got to see. Because if we can't see ourselves like this, then we cannot uh, be the recipients of everything that God has for us. He says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye be rooted and grounded in love. Amen. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with the fullness of God. You see, unless our hearts are filled with this persuasion, we will not be able to be filled with the fullness of God. And as Greg said, what is the fullness of God? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is love. And so for our hearts to be filled with this love, we have to be filled with the same persuasion that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is persuaded of. And you know, as I meditated on this yesterday, I was just thinking of my kids. I love my kids, okay? I love my sons. And you know, when my kids did something wrong, I was blind to their mistakes because I love them so much. And other people could look at my children and see all their flaws and mistakes and judge them. But if their hearts were persuaded with, with what my heart was persuaded of about my children, then their hearts would be filled with the same love and they would look at my children just like I do. Well, that's the way it is with God. God looks at every person as innocent. His love doesn't see any faults or weaknesses in anybody. And unless our hearts are persuaded with the same logic that motivates and moves God, then our hearts will not be filled with the same love that is in God. It's so wonderful to be able to look at people and not see their faults, but to see every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Oh, this is so glorious. I love thinking on the thoughts of God. It makes me happy. It makes me so happy. It makes my heart feel warm. And it makes me want to just 
do something for somebody. I don't know. You know, the scripture says in John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave. You see, when your heart is filled with love, you just want to give. You just want to do something for somebody. You just want to put a smile on somebody's face and make them feel so good. Because you know what? You know, the um, uh, Apostle John in his epistle said this whole world lies in wickedness. You know, that wickedness is the um, false belief system that you're not what you ought to be. The whole world is filled with that. Whichever way you turn... You're hearing what you need to do to look good, to be accepted, you know, and all this. And, you know, it just makes you feel rotten. And so to have somebody come along and to tell somebody, you know what? I think you're wonderful. God loves you. And he thinks you're the cat's meow. And he wants you to see yourself as he sees you. Boy, I'll tell you what. That just puts a smile on people's faces because they're not used to hearing that. Well, I feel much better that I have shared my heart with you. And I just want you all to have such a wonderful day. And you know something? As I said, Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You know... I was quiet for a couple of weeks because I was um, consumed with the cares of this world. I mean, I'm telling you straight up. I mean, it wasn't like I was doing rotten stuff or anything. I was just busy feathering my nest of my new place where I live. And I wanted to, to be comfortable and to my liking and all of that. But you know what? There's only one thing that's needful. And that's to sit at the feet of Jesus and let him persuade your heart of what he's persuaded of. And you know what? The moment that I was able to turn my attention back and just sit and listen to the word, then the life started flowing. The vital principle was filling my heart with the good news. And you know what? As my heart was filled with this good news and it made me feel so good, well, guess what love does? I got to share it with you. Amen. So I hope this blessed you. You have an awesome day. Amen. Because you know what? You are awesome. Glory to God.